Chapter RJY201 The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer edited by D Lang Purves This reading is based on the book The Canterbury Tales and Other Poems The original text contains poems by Chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor To view these please click on the Gutenberg e-text link on the LibriVox catalog page of The Canterbury Tales the Squire's Tale, Pars Prima, First Part. At Sarah, in the land of Tartary, there dwelt a king that warred Russi, through which there died many a doughty man. This noble king was called Cambuscan, which in his time was of so great renown that there was nowhere in no region so excellent a lord in all thing. Him lacked not that longeth to a king, as of the sect of which that he was born. He kept his law, to which he was we sworn, and thereto he was hardy, wise, and rich, and piteous, and just, always he like. True of his word, benign and honorable, of his courage as any sinner stable, young, fresh, and strong, in arms desirous as any bachelor of all his house. A fair person he was, and fortunate, and kept always so well his royal estate that there was nowhere such another man. This noble king, this Tartar Cambuscan, had two sons by Alfeta his wife, of which the eldest hight Algarsif, the other was he called Cambalo. A daughter had hit this worthy king also, that youngest was, and hight Canas. But for to tell you all her beauty, it lies not in my tongue, nor my cunning, I dare not undertake so high a thing. Mine English ek is insufficient. It must be a rather excellent, That could his colors longing for that art. If he should her describe in any part, I am none such, I must speak as I can. And so befell, that when this Cambuscan Had twenty winters borne his diadem, As he was want from year to year, I deem he let the feast of his nativity do cry throughout Sarah his city, the last Ides of March after the year. Phoebus the sun, full jolly, was and clear, for he was nigh his exaltation in Mart's face, and in his mansion in Ares, the choleric hot sign, full lusty, was the weather and benign, for which the fowls against the sun sheen what for the season and the young green. Full loud sang their affectations, them seemed to have got protections against the sword of winter keen and cold. This Cambuscan, of which I have you told, in royal vesture sat upon his die, with diadem, full high in his palace, and held his feast so solemn and so rich, that in this world was there none at lich, of which if I should tell all the array, than would it occupy a summer's day, and eke it needeth not for to devise at every course the order of service. I will not tell of their strange sows, nor of their swains, nor of their heron sows, eke in that land as tell knights old, there is some meat that is full dainty hold, that in this land men reck of it full small. There is no man that may reporten all. I will not tear you, for it is prime, and for it is no fruit but loss of time. Unto my purpose I will have recourse. And so befell that, after the third course, while that this king sat thus in his nobly, hearing his minstrels their things play, before him at his board deliciously, and at the hall door all suddenly there came a knight upon a steed of brass, and in his hand a broad mirror of glass, upon his thumb he had of gold a ring, and by his side a naked sword hanging, and up he rode into the high board, in all the hall was there not spoke a word, for marvel of this knight him to behold, full busily they waited, young and old. This strange knight, that came thus suddenly, all armed, save his head, full richly, saluted king and queen and lords all, by order as they sat in the hall, with so high reverence, 
and observance, as well in speech as in his countenance, that Gawain, with his old courtesy, though he were come again out of fairy, him could not amend with a word, and after this, before the high board, he with a manly voice said his message. After the form used in his language, without vice, or syllable, or letter, and for his tale should seem the better, accordant to his words was his cheer, as teacheth art of speech them that it leer, albeit that I cannot sound his style, nor cannot climb over so high a style. Yet say I this, as to commune intent, thus much amounteth all that ever he meant, if it so be that I have it in mind. He said, The king of Erebay and Ind, my liege lord, on this solemn day, saluteth you as he best can and may, and sendeth you, in honor of your feast, by me, that am already at your hest, this steed of brass, that easily and well can in the space of one day natural, this is to say, in four and twenty hours, whereso you list, in drought or else in showers, bear your body into every place to which your heart willeth for to pace, without whim of you, through foul or fair, or if you list to fly as high in the air as doth an eagle, when him list to soar, this same steed shall bear you evermore without harm, till ye be where you lest, though that ye sleep on his back, or rest. And turn again with writhing of pen, he that it wrought, he could many again, he waited in any a constellation, ere he had done this operation, and knew full many a seal, and many a bond, this mere eck, that I have in mind, Hond, hath such a might, that men may in it see, when there shall fall any adversity, unto your realm, or to yourself also, and openly, who is your friend or foe. And over all this, if any lady bright hath set her heart on any manner white, if he be false, she shall see his treason, for his new love, and all his subtlety, so openly that there shall nothing hide. Wherefore, against this lusty summer tide, this mirror and this ring that ye may see, he hath sent to my lady Canas, your excellent daughter that is here. The virtue of this ring, if ye will hear, is this, that if her list it for to wear, upon her thumb her in her purse it bear, there is no fowl that flieth under heaven, that she shall not well understand his stiffen, and know his meaning openly and plain, and answer him in language again. And every grass that groweth upon root, she shall ick know, to whom it will do boot. All be his wounds ne'er so deep and wide. This naked sword that hangeth by my side, such virtue hath, that what man that it smite, throughout his armor it will carve and bite, were it as thick as is a branched oak. And what man is he wounded with a stroke, shall ne'er be whole till that you list of grace to stroke him with the flat in the place. Where he is hurt, this is as much to say, and you must with the flat sword again stroke him upon the wound, and it will close. This is the very sooth without gloss, it faileth not, while it is in your hold. And when this knight had thus his tale told, he rode out of the hall, and down he light. His steed which that shone as sun-bright, stood in the court as still as any stone. The knight is to his chamber led anon, and is unarmed, and to meet he set. These presents be full richly effet. This is to say, the sword and the mirror, and borne anon into the high tower, with certain officers ordained therefore. And unto Canast the ring is bore solemnly, where she sat at the table, Sickerly without torn any fable. The horse of brass, that may not be remued, It stood as it were to the ground he glued. There may no man out of the place it drive, For no engine of windlass or plive, And cause why, for they can not the craft. And therefore in the place they have it laughed, Till that the knight hath taught them the manner, 
to void him, as ye shall after hear. Great was the press that swarmed to and fro, to garn on this horse that stood so. For it so high was, and so broad and long, so well proportioned for to be strong, right as it were a steed of Lombardy, therewith so hoarsely and so quick of eye, as it gentle play coarser were. For cert, from his tail unto his ear, nature nor art ne could him not amend, in no degree, as all the people wend. But evermore their most wonder was how that it could go, and was of brass. It was of fairy, as the people seemed, diverse folk diversely they deemed, as many heads, as many wits been. They murmured as doth a swarm of been, and made skills after their fantasies, rehearsing of the old poetries, and said that it was like the Pegasi, the horse that had wings for it to flay, or else it was the Greek's horse Sinon that brought Troy to destruction, as men may in the old Gestes read. Mine heart, quoth one, is evermore in dread. I trow some men of arms be therein, that shape them with this city for to win. It were right good that all such things were known. Another round to his fellow low, and said, He lies, for it is rather like an appearance made by some magic as jugglers playing at these feasts great. Of sundry doubts they jangled thus and treat, as lewd people deem commonly of things that be made more subtly, than they can in their lewdness comprehend. They deem gladly to the batter end. And some of them wonder on the mirror that born was up into the master tower how men might knit such things see. Another answered and said, It might well be naturally by compositions of angles and of sly reflections, and said that in Rome was such a one. They speak of Alhazen and Vitillon and Aristotle, that wrote in their lives of quaint mirrors and of perspectives, as know they that have their books heard. And other folk have wondered on the sword, that would pierce throughout anything, and fell in speech of Telephus the king, and of Achilles for his quaint spear, for he could with it both heal and dare, write, and such wise men may with the sword of which right now you have yourselves heard. They spake of sundry hardening of metal, and spake of medicines therewithal, and how, and when, it should be hardened be, which is unknown, I'll gate unto me. Then spake they of Canassus' ring, and said in all, that such a wondrous thing of craft and rings heard they never none, save that he, Moses, and King Solomon, had the name of conning in such art. Thus said the people, and drew them apart. Put Nathless some say that it was wonder to make in a fern ashes glass, and yet is glass not like ashes of fern. But for, they have you known it is so fern, therefore seethes their jangling and their wonder, as sore wonder some on cause of thunder, and ebb and flood, on gossamer and mist, and on all things till that the cause is wist. Thus jangle they and demon and devise, till that the king gan from his board arise. Phoebus had left the angle Maradonal. And yet ascending was the beast royal, the gentle lion with his Aldrian, when that this Tartar king, this Cambuscan, rose from the board, there as he sat full high, before him went, the loud minstrelsy, till he came to his chamber of paraments, there as they sounded diverse instruments, that it was like a heaven for to hear. Now danced lusty Venus's children dear, for in the fish their lady sat full, and looked on them with a friendly eye. This noble king is set upon his throne, this strange knight is fetched to him full son, and on the dance he goes with Knaz. Here is the revel and the jollity that is not able a dull man to devise. He must have known love and his service, and been a feastly man, as fresh as may, that should you devise such array. 
who could tell in you the form of dances so uncouth and so fresh countenances such subtle lookings and dissimulances for dread of jealous men's appearance evenings no man but lancelot and he is dead therefore i pass o'er all this lusty head i say no more but in this jolliness i leave them till to supper men them dress the steward bids the spices for to high and eke the wine and all this melody the ushers and the squires be gone the spices and the wine is come anon they eat and drink and when this hath an end unto the temple as reason was they went this service done they sup in all by day what needeth you rehearse their array each man what well that at a king's feast is plenty to the most and to the least and dateless more be in my knowing as after supper went this noble king to see the horse of brass with all a rout of lords and of ladies him about such wondering was there on this horse of brass that since the great siege of troy was there as men wondered on a horse also near was there such a wondering as was though but finally the king asked the knight the virtue of this courser and the might and prayed him to tell his governance the horse anon began to trip and dance when that the knight laid hand upon his rein and said sir there is no more to say in but when you list to ride in any way you must trill a pin stand in his ear which i shall tell you betwixt us two you must name him to what place also or to what country that you list to ride and when ye come where ye list abide bid him descend and trill another pen for therein lies the effect of all the gin. And he will down descend, and do your will, and in that place he will abide still. Though all the world had the contrary swore, he shall not thence be thrown, nor be bore. Or if you list to bid him, then gone, trill the, this pen, and he will vanish anon, out of the sight of every man or wit. And come again, be it by day or night, when that you list to clep him again in such a guise as I shall to you say and betwixt you and me, and that full soon, ride when you list, there is no more to dawn. Informed when the king was of the knight, and had him conceived in this wit aright, the manner and the form of all this thing, full glad and blithe, this nobly doughty king repaired to his revel as before. The brutal is into the tower borne, and kept among his jewels life and dear. The horse vanished, I not in what manner, out of their sight, yet get no more of me. And thus I leave in lust and jollity, this cambuscan his lord's feasting, until well nigh the day began to spring. Pars Secunda Second Part the norse of digestion the sleep gan on them wink and bade them take keep that much mirth and labor will have rest and with a gaping mouth he all them kessed and said that it was time to lie down for blood was in his domination cherish the blood nature's friend quoth he they thanked him gaping by two and three and every wit gan draw him to his rest as sleep them bade they took it for the best their dreams shall not now be told for me Full are the heeds of famosity, that cause dreams of which there is no charge. They slept, till that it was the prime large. The most part, but it was Canass. She was full measurable as woman be, for if her father had she taken after, to go to rest soon after it was eve, her lists not appalled for to be, nor on the morrow unfeastly for to see, and slept her first sleep, and then awoke. For such a joy she in her heart took, both of her quaint of ring and her mirror, that twenty times she changed her color, and in her sleep, right for the impression, of her mirror, she had a vision. Wherefore, ere that the sun gan be glide, she called upon her mistress her beside, and said that her lists for to rise. These old women, that be gladly wise, as are her mistresses answered anon, and said, Madam, whither will ye gone thus early? For the folk be all in rest. I will, quoth she, arise, for me lest no longer for to sleep, and walk about. Her mistresses called woman a great rout, and up they rose, 
well of ten or twelve, uprose fresh Canass herself, as ruddy and bright as is the young sun, that in the ram is four degrees he run, no higher was he, when she ready was, and forth she walked easily apace, arrayed after the lusty season's swoot, lightly for to play and walk on foot, not but with five or six of her meaning, and in a trench forth in the park went she, the vapor, which up from the earth clod made the sun to seem ruddy and broad. But, Nathless, it was so fair a sight that it made all their hearts for to light. What for the season and the morning, and for the fowls that she heard sing? For right anon she wist what they meant, right by their song, and knew all their intent. The knot, why that every tale is told, if it be tarried, till the list be cold, of them that have it hearkened after yore, the savour passeth ever longer more, for fulsomeness of the prolixity, and by that same reason thinketh me, I should unto the knot condescend, and make of her walking soon an end. Amid a tree for dry, as white as chalk, there sat a falcon o'er her head full high, that with a piteous voice so gan to cry, that all the wood resounded of her cry, and beat she had herself so piteously with both her wings, till the red blood ran in long the tree, there as she stood, and ever in one, always she cried and shrite, and with her beak herself so pite, that there is no tiger, nor cruel beast, that dwelleth either in wood or in forest, but would have wept, if that he weep could, for sorrow of her, she shrieked always so loud, there was never yet no man alive, if that he could a falcon well describe, that heard of such another of fairness, as well as plumage, as of gentleness, of shape, of all that might reckon be, a falcon peregrine seems she, of friend land, and ever as she stood, she swooned now, and now for lack of blood, till well nigh is she fallen from the tree. This fair king's daughter can ask that on her finger bear the quaint ring through which she understood well everything that any fowl may in her leaden sand, and could him answer in his leaden again, hath understood what this falcon said, and well now for the ruth almost she died, and to the tree she went full hastily, and on this falcon looked piteously, and held her lap abroad, for well she wist, the falcon must fall from the twist, when that she swooned next for lack of blood. A long while to wait her she stood, till at the last she spake in this manner, unto the hawk, as ye shall after hear. What is the cause, if it be for to tell, that ye be in this furial pain of hell, quoth Canass unto this hawk above, is this for sorrow of of death, or loss of love, for as I trow, these be the causes, too, that cause most a gentle heart woe. Of other harm it needeth not to speak, for ye yourself upon yourself a reek, which proveth well that either ire or dread must be occasion of your cruel deed. Since that I see none other, white you chase, for love of God, as do yourself grace. Or what may be your help? For west nor east, I never saw air now so bird nor beast, that fared with himself so piteously. Ye slay me with your sorrow, verily. I have of you so great compassion, for God's love come from the tree adown, and, as I am a king's daughter true, if that I verily the cause is new of your disease, if it lay in my might, I would amend it, ere that it were night. So wisely help me the great God of kind, and herbies shall I right enough find, to heal with your hurts, hastily. Then shrieked this falcon yet more piteously than ever she did, and fell to the ground anon, and lay a swoon as dead as lies a stone, till Canass had in her lap her take. Unto that time she gan of swoon awake, and after that she out of swoon abrayed, right in her hawk's leaden thus she said, That pity runneth soon in gentle heart, feeling his similitude in pain smart, is proved every day as men may see, as well by work as by authority, for gentle heart kith gentleness. I see well, 
that ye have on my distress compassion my fair caness of very womanly benighty that nature in your principles has set but for no hope for to fare the bet but for to bay unto your heart free and for to make others aware by me as by the whelp chastised is the lion right for that cause and that conclusion while that i have a leisure and a space mine harm i will confession ere a pace and ever while that one her sorrow told the other wept as she to water hold till that the falcon bade her to be still and with a sigh right thus she said her till where i was bred alas that light that day and fostered in rock of marble gray so tenderly that nothing ailed me i wist not what was her adversity till i could flee full high under the sky then dwelled tercelet me fast by that seemed a well of all gentleness all were he full of treason and falseness it was so wrapped under humble cheer and under hue of truth in such manner under pleasance and under busy pain that no white wean that he could feign so deep in grain he dyed his colors right as a serpent hides him under flowers till he may see his time for to bite right so this god of love's hypocrite did so his ceremonies and obeisances and kept in semblance all his observances that sudden unto gentleness of love as on a tomb is all the fair above and under is the corpse which that ye wet such was this hypocrite both cold and hot and in this wise he served his intent that save the fiend none wist what he meant till he so long had weeped and complained and many a year his service to me feigned till that mine heart too piteous and too nice all innocent of his crown malice for feared of his death as thought me upon his oaths and his surety granted him love on this condition that evermore mine honor and renown were saved both privy and apert this is to say that after his descent i gave him all my heart and all my thought god wot and he that other waste not and took his heart and change of mind for a but sooth is said gone since many a day a true white and thief think not one and when he saw the thing so far he gone that i have granted him fully my love in such a wise as i have said above and given him my heart as free true as he swore that he gave his heart to me and on this tiger full of doubleness fell on his knees with so great humbleness with so high reverence and by his cheer so like a gentle lover in manner so ravished as it seemed for the joy that never jason nor paris of troy jason certes nor ever other man since lamech was that alder first began to love too as right folk before nor ever since the first man was born could no one by twenty thousand counterfeit the suffimes of his art where doubleness of feigning should approach nor worthy were to unbuckle his galosh nor could so thank a white as he did me his manner was a heaven for to see to any woman were she ne'er so wise so painted he and kempt at point devise as well his words as his countenance and i so loved for his obedience and for the truth i deemed in his heart that if so were that anything him smart all were it ne'er so light and i it wist methought i felt death at my heart twist and shortly so far forth this thing is went that my will was his will instrument that is to say my wills obeyed his will in all thing as far as reason fill keeping the bounds of my worship ever and never had i a thing so left or lever as him god what nor ever shall no more this lasted longer than a year or two that i supposed of him naught but good but finally thus at the last it stood that fortune would that he must win out of that place which that i was in where me was woe it is no question i cannot make of it description for one thing dare i tell boldly i know what is the pain of death thereby such harm i felt for he might not believe so on a day of me he took his leave so sorrowful ick, that i ween verily that he had felt as much harm as i when that i heard him speak and saw his hue but nathless i thought he was so true and ick, that he repair should again within a little while sooth to say and reason would eke that he must go 
for his honor, as often happened so, that I have made virtue of necessity, and took it will, since that it must be. As I best might, I hid from him my sorrow, and took him by the hand, St. John to borrow, and said him thus, Lo, I am yours all, be such as I have been to you, and shall. What he answered it needs not to rehearse, who can say bet that he who can do worse? When he had all well said, then had he done. Therefore that shall be with the fiend, him thus heard I say. Long spoon. So at the last he must forth his way, and forth he flew, till he came where him lest. When it came him to propose for to rest, I trow that he had thilk text in mind, that all thing repairing to his kind gladdeth himself. Thus say men, as I guess, men love of, proper, kind, newfingless, as birds do, that men in cages feed. For though thou night and day take of them heed, and strew their cage fair and soft as silk, and give them sugar, honey, bread, and milk, yet right anon, as that his door is up, he with his feet will spurn down his cup, and to the wood he will, and worms eat. So newfingle buy they of their meat, and love novelties of proper kind. No gentleness of blood may them bind. So far this terse little last the day, Though he were gentle-born, and fresh, and gay, And goodly for to me, and humble, and free, He saw upon a time a kite flee. And suddenly he loved this kite so, That all his love is clean from me ye go, And hath his troth false in this wise, That hath the kite my love in her service, And I am lorn without remedy. And with that word this falcon gan to cry, And swooned aft in Canassus' barn. Great was the sorrow for that hawk's harm. That Canass and all her woman made, They wist not how they might the falcon glade, But Canass home bare her in her lap, And softly in plasters can her wrap. There as she with her beak had heard herself, Now cannot Canass but herbs delve Out of the ground, and make salves new of Herbs, precious and fine a few, To heal with this hawk from day to night. She did her business, and all her might, And by her bed's head she made a mew, And covered it with villets blue, In sign of truth that is in woman seen, And all without the mew was painted green, In which were painted all these false fowls, As by the titifs, terslets and owls, And pies on them for to cry and chide. Right, for despite were painted them beside, Thus leave I canass her hawk-keeping, I will no more as now speak of her ring, Till it come eft to purpose for to sayne, How that this falcon got her love again, Repentant, as the story telleth, By mediation of Cambalus, The king's son of which that I told you. But henceforth I will my process hold To speak of adventures and of battles, That yet was never heard so great marvels. First I will tell you of Cambuscan, that in his time many a city wan, and after will I speak of Agassif, how he won Theodora to his wife, for whom full oft in great peril he was, and he had been holden by the horse of brass, and after will I speak of Cambolo, that fought in lists with the brethren too for Canas, ere that he might her win, and where I left I will again begin. End of Squire's Tale